Hey there, Dan Stein here. In this video, I'm going to show you two ways to get preliminary topo into Revit. In this case, we'll be using SketchUp 2023 and Revit 2024. So I turned on this little location toolbar in SketchUp, which gives me the two commands I need. I'll open up this add location option, and then you have to zoom in to a certain level before the select region works. Otherwise, it'll be grayed out. There's a certain size that you are allowed to do. And then when you click select region, you get this window that shows up that you can move around. Uh, there's also a resolution. So if this is a mountainous area in the background of your building, you might set it to a lower resolution. But a combination of resolution and area determine if you can import it or not. So I'll just select that area. And then it initially comes into SketchUp flat, and that's where this other icon comes in. And this is a, a fun area that I got. Very clearly, the topo is coming in. So this is particularly great for background context, maybe in an endscape model, or preliminary contours until you get a survey. So this can end up in Revit, which is going to be our next step. We're going to go to File, Export, 3D Model. So I'm going to make a folder to put this in. And the first example here, I'm going to do DWG. I'm just going to call it DWG, even though the extension will be obvious. If we click on Options, there's nothing really to do here. We don't have text or dimensions, so that's irrelevant. And the CAD version doesn't particularly matter since we're going into the latest version of Revit. So I just exported the DWG file. And then the second option, I'll explain the difference between the two once we get into Revit, is to export an OBJ file. And if we go into options here, uh, this was not checked in my initial attempt at doing this, so I checked triangulate all faces. This is something you should also do when you're requesting a CAD file from your surveyor or civil design team. Rather than getting polylines at the correct elevation in CAD, you should ask for a triangulated surface. You get a lot more fidelity in Revit when you do that, no matter what version of Revit you're in. And then I uncheck this Y is up because then that would make the model come in sideways. So I'm going to call this OBJ example. Click export. And then now that that's done, I'm going to switch over to Revit. In this empty new template that I just started, I'm going to go to the insert tab and link CAD. Here's my CAD file. I'm going to tell it to not correct lines that are slightly off axis, and then open. I'm going to do fit extents, and now we have this surface. If we switch this to shaded, we can see we have this nice triangulated surface. If I go into visibility graphics and imported categories tab for this view, you can see there's nothing on layer zero and then everything is on this layer location terrain. So everything just disappeared in the background there. So I'm going to turn that back on. And then interestingly enough, just to look at this object by itself for a moment, if we go to Object Styles and go to Imported Categories, the location terrain has this material assigned to it called Global. So we can adjust the Revit material or an AutoCAD layer that has 3D geometry on it. So right now we're in shade mode. That's why we're getting this rather dark surface because it was set to black, basically. And so just as an example, I can change the color of that. And then I could even specify a material. So this particular material is just a field of grass, not necessarily appropriate or this giant mountainous area. So I'll just set it to 300 feet. And then if I use the new textures feature in 2024, I can see this 
texture applied to this surface. So again, obviously this is not the surface that is associated with what we pulled from SketchUp. The images that are associated with this surface are in the folder next to this DWG file, but they're not really useful without doing a lot of work. All right, uh, before we move on to the next example, it's also worth noting that we can turn this into a topo solid. So we're gonna click the down arrow on the massing in sight tab under the topo solid command and select create from import and then create from CAD. And then we'll pick the only CAD file in the model. And then I'm gonna uncheck these two which don't have anything on them so I don't think it'll make any difference but we know that this is a layer in CAD that has the terrain on it, the triangulated surface. And then now this is just a, a simple process that happens rather quickly. If I go into visibility graphics for this view and turn off the CAD file, or I could just simply unload it or completely remove it altogether. Now we have this great topo solid element. You can see it already has a thickness associated with it. If I select this and go to edit type, edit structure, I also have this layer option. I'll just set it to that same layer that I used for the CAD layer just to apply that quickly. And so now we have that material. If I go into visibility graphics and go down to the topo solid and I don't remember which of these is related to the lines showing up exactly for the, the triangulated surface, but you turn all of those off and you can see you end up with just this really simple surface in Revit here. All right, so now I'm gonna select this topo solid and just get it out of here. So the second option, if I go back to the insert tab, I can use that OBJ file that I exported so I can link it or import it. Uh, previous versions of Revit would only let you import an OBJ, but if we wanted to link this, we browse to the folder where I saved it. Of course, we have to tell it to look for OBJ files. And so the way OBJ works and the way Revit uses OBJ files, it will actually take the surface and the textures that are in this adjacent folder and the SketchUp file that we we're in was based on inches. And there it is. I'm going to quickly fire up Enscape, which now has 2024 support for Revit. And so while that's loading, well, I guess I have to wait. So in Enscape, you can see this is a really large site, as you can imagine. You can't just easily arrow key and spin your wheel. So I'm going to double click here. Then, of course, depending on where your project is, you can imagine looking out a view and having and having this great view of the actual mountainous area in the background showing up. And so the way we typically manage these kind of files at Lake Plato in, in our typical workflow, we have a Revit file for the building, a Revit file for the site around the building, the actual survey data or proposed civil contours, and then in a scenario where we have this larger region, call it a site region file. So this will have a hole in it somewhere where the proposed and the more accurate data is around the building. And then once you get out past that, you'll have this larger region file. So hope you find this helpful. Let, let us know in the chat if you have some other ideas or workflows that you like to work with.